that is worse than a sheep in shepherd's clothing. Or wolves in sheep clothing. Again, there is one thing that is worse than a wolf in sheep clothing. It is a wolf in shepherd's clothing. Woe to the shepherds who are causing my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, to perish and are scattering them, declares the Lord. What is it about power, about possessions, about positions, a popularity that tend to lead people astray. It's like it goes to their head. Rather, it's political leadership, politicians, as well as the priesthood, as we see in this time, and many of the false prophets, so-called prophets, pursued their own selfish desires. This was in the day of Jeremiah, but I'm sure you can find some parallels in our days today. Amen. These people were after their own self-interest. We learned that they were immoral, exchanging the truth for a lie, calling good evil and evil good, unethical, using dishonest scares getting over on the poor people for their own gains, abusing their power. I know it sounds familiar. The people had itching ears, and the false prophets were eager to tell them what they wanted to hear instead of what they needed to hear. I don't know what it is about people in positions of power, or influence that often lack accountability. No one is there that will hold their feet to the fire. You see it with our celebrities and with the people in high leadership rankings. They surround themselves with yes men, yes women, who tell them the nice things because they're afraid to lose their standing. Um, but still, no matter how high you get in this life, still you are accountable to God. Amen. Amen. The celebrity that you look up to, that influencer, they are still accountable to God. Amen. God in his word says that I am the God who raises up kings and takes them down. He is the judge. How easily those who get in positions of power lead the rest of us astray. The book of Jeremiah, during this time period, we're nearing the end of the kingdom of Israel, of Judah. The last king is on the throne. Zedekiah, Zedekiah is on the throne. His name means the Lord is righteous. But Zedekiah is everything but a righteous man. Now he's going to live up to the name he was given. To be called righteous and to understand the righteousness of God, but to live so contrary to it. Remember the story of Alexander the Great and Alexander the Lesser. We all know about Alexander the Great conquered the known world by the age of 33. High in prestige, power, influence. It says in this story that one day there was a man whose name was also Alexander came into his courts. This man was a peasant and a common thief. And Alexander looked at him when it was time to 
execute judgment. He told this thief, this person, he said, you need to change your name or change your conduct. We call ourselves Christians, but from the outside world, what do we look like? Amen. Can you tell a difference between the world and the church? There have been too many wolves in sheep clothing. And Jeremiah, inspiration of God, is telling the people to look out, to watch out, to be on your guard. This is how you find a false prophet. This is how you find a false shepherd. A wolf in shepherd's clothes. Deals with them in the midst of this. But while the people are being led astray, God is still issuing a promise. You used to wonder if people were a reflection of the leadership or was leadership a reflection of the people. When we analyze just America over the last, I don't know, you can go back even farther in the last half dozen years. We, we, when you look back at it, are we reflecting our government or is our government reflecting us? Are we reflecting our priests and our pastors? Are they a reflection of us? We criticize them. We, we talk about them and all the wrong that they're doing. But are they just us? Amen. This is what the Lord says of those who get into this high influence and lead his people astray. There's a few charges that he has against the shepherds. Shepherds is where we get the word pastor from. It's a word that means to tend to or to feed. God says that his people who are in charge of tending to his flock had not been tending to his flock, but tending to themselves. And because of this, God was going to tend to them. This is what the Lord says. He says, I will repay. I will repay them for their evil against you. What evil have they done? They have destroyed the people and scattered them. The people have lost hope. They have lost hope in their government, in their religious leaders, in their society, in the system. And God is saying, it's all right. I know that it's not your fault. I'm going to repay them for what they did and what they caused you to do. It's all right. It's all right. He, he, he says, and I love the play on words. He says, this is what the Lord says. He says, the God of Israel says concerning those who tend the flock, who are tending my people, you have scattered my flock and you have driven them away. And you have not been concerned about them, about yourself. And I'm going to tend to you. I'm going to hold you accountable for your evil deeds. Remember when I was in grade school, I got into a little scuffle, and I can remember my dad. Probably more so my mom, unless she's watching this. If he hits you, hit him back. <laughs> if they put their hands on you, then you have an excuse to put your hands on them. And that was the principle that I thought that I would live by. Oh my God. But somewhere along the line, my dad, who was a grizzly bear, became a teddy bear. And he was upset and told me one day, why did you hit them? Well, they hit me. Why did you, well, they hit me? That's no excuse. Hold on. We can't. 
Trust in God's justice. But God, you take it too long. <laughs> justice delayed is injustice denied. Amen. God is righteous and our retribution. Those who scattered us, God says he'll gather together. But there, there, there's a thing, pray, uh, uh, a prayer that David prayed, the uh, imperatory prayer. That's a prayer for judgment and justice of calamities and curses. David said, look, I'm not going to put my hands on you, but I'm going to pray that God deal with you. He said, look, I ain't going to touch you. Yeah, hey, we, we think of David and Saul. Saul who wanted David dead. And David who had several opportunities to kill Saul. Mm -hmm. I said, I won't do it. God will repay. Amen. But he prayed some harsh prayers. Listen to these prayers from David. David prayed up concerning Saul. So he said, he said they, David prays in Psalms uh, 3 and 7. He says, I pray for God to strike all my enemies on the cheeks of the heart that he break their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> He said, look, I'm not going to deal with them. But God, I want you to. I, 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 I heard some of y'all say it. I know y'all. You better get them down before I do. <laughs> I know y'all. <laughs> Listen to this. They, they were praying for, they, they was on the run from his son and, and, and a lot of the people in his kingdom. They were praised that his friends and even his family that had wronged him and plotted against his demise, that they would face death, hell, and the wrath of God. That's that Psalms 55 and 15. This, this is David. He says, I'm not going to touch you, but I'm going to put my God on you. <laughs> let, let, listen to what David said. David said this in, in, in Psalms 109. He said, David prays for the punishment of those who wronged him. He says, look, I, I pray that their children be fatherless. I pray that their wives be widows. He says, I pray that they don't even come to repentance and their name be blotted out the book of life. He said, I'm not going to touch you. He says, but I'm going to trust God to repay. But, but Jesus says there's a better way. You see, see See, David, David was like, look, 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 I'm going to sick my God on you. I'm not going to touch you. But Jesus says there's a better way. Right. Jesus says there's a better way. Jesus says this. He says, I know you heard it's been said that, that maybe you should wish ill upon your enemy. That maybe you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you that you ought to love your enemy. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> He says, to bless those who curse you. Oh, that's, that's see, see, there's a better way. See, see my dad used to say, he said, he hits you, hits you back. And he said, then one day it was like, don't let him hit you, but I can take him. <laughs> but it ain't about you being able to take him. Oh, oh. The Bible says that the meek shall inherit the earth. Yes. Meekness isn't weakness. What meekness means is those who have sores in their sheep but, but refuse to draw them out. Oh, when they have reason to. It's like, well, I, I have a reason to draw my sword, but I'm going to exercise some patience. Yes. I'm going to exercise some grace. Yes. I'm going to be cool in this situation. Yes. Jesus says to love your enemies and to bless those who curse you. And to good to those who hate you. Oh, Pray for those yes, yes. in spite of themselves. Yes. So you don't, <laughs> you're not good to them because they've been good to you, That's right. but because of who you are yes. and who you are. Amen. You trust God even when you're wrong. Amen. It, it, it goes from God get them to God save them. Yes. Yes. God, you can even save them. You can even save them. God, I'm trusting you. Because <laughs> God, I know that you're in control. Jesus says he, he reigns on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. And if you love those who love you, what reward is it for you? 
Come on, say that if, if you desire vengeance, you carry two, you dig two graves. Those who desire vengeance dig two graves. You often bury yourself trying to bury someone else. Because when they hit low, you still got to hit high. Oh, you got you got to remember who you are in spite of what they do. Bless those who persecute you. Amen. Bless and do not curse. Never take on your own revenge. Beloved, this is Paul. He says, give room for God's wrath. Amen. 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 Mm. To give, give room for God's wrath, but, but if you, because God said, vengeance is mine. Revenge is mine. I will avenge you. Trust me. He said, what you ought to do is if your enemy is hungry, you feed them. Yes, yes. If they thirsty, you give them a drink. And by doing this, put burning coals on their forehead. You don't overcome evil with evil, but you overcome evil with good. Uh, it's water that doubts the flame. Trust God that he will repay. I know they wronged you, but God will make it right. Trust God will repay them for their evil. And God will, the Lord will, restore. He will repay them and he will restore the remnant. The Lord will restore the survivors. Yes, yes, yes. He says, and I myself will gather the remnant. Look, they scattered my people. They destroyed my people. They influenced them. This country, this culture. To kill themselves. To hate God. And to go straight. But I will gather the survivors. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. I will gather the remnant yes. of my flock from all the countries. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. From every crack and every corner. Hmm. From all the countries where they have been driven out. And I will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Has God rejected his people? No. Has he? No. Oh, has. Far from it. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scriptures say in the passage of Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have torn down your altars. And I alone am left. And they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response? He says, I have kept to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. And in the same way, <laughs> there's also going to come a time in this present time that the remnants, that the survivors, will be called back according to God's grace. Yes. God is restoring his people. Isaiah says, Isaiah 10 20 says, Now on that day the remnant of Israel and those of the house of Jacob uh, who have escaped the survivors will no longer rely on the one who struck them, but they will rely on the Lord, the Holy One. Amen. They will no longer rely on the ones who struck them. Ah, oh, the system that tears you down, that separates your family, that destroys our young men, our young people. Yes. The culture that does this. You will no longer have to rely on them. I'm done taking your abuse.
I'm going to deal with this. Uh, now I'm going to raise up a righteous branch. And he will reign as king and act wisely. Because Zedekiah, false prophets, weren't acting wisely. They weren't doing justice, Bible says. They weren't doing the righteous things in the land. And it sounds familiar. Says in, in his day, Judah will be saved. All right, all right. Look, 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 look. Judah, what do you mean? Well, we know, I know I got some scholars in here. Praise. In his day, those who praise will be saved. Will you praise the Lord? Yes. Look, 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 look. <laughs> you you want to be saved? Give some praise. Yeah. He, he, he says, and Israel will live secure. Israel means those who wrestle with God. Those who struggle with God. Look, God, I ain't got it all figured out. I don't know all the answers, but I'm struggling, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm seeking you. I'm just trying to find you. I want you to show me. Those who struggle with God, those who praise God, will be saved and will live securely. And in his name, he will be called the Lord our righteousness. Ooh. So he's saying he will be called Zedekiah. <laughs> look, 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 look. He will be called the Lord is our righteousness. Yes. Not true Zedekiah, but a real Zedekiah yes. who lives up to the name he was given. Ooh, my God. Amen. My God. Shepherds. Sorry. Wolves. Jesus says that in spite of all of this, I will repay them for the evil. I will restore my remnant, my survivors, just survive, just survive, and I will reign over them. Yes. So I will keep them safe and secure. I will protect them. The enemies that hurt them or damaged them before, they won't have room. They won't get in. I don't know what he did to you in your youth, but he can't hurt you now. Amen. I don't know what she said to you as a child, but she can't hurt you now. Amen. God's got you. Amen. God's Amen. protecting you. Jesus Amen. says, I am the good shepherd. Yes, yes. I am the good shepherd. Yes. The good shepherd laid down his life yes. for the sheep. Amen. Oh. Amen. See, the wolf won't do that. <laughs> but the good shepherd Lay down his life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. He who is a hired man is not the shepherd. Mm -hmm. the, the, the word pastor comes as a derivative from the word shepherd. Mm -hmm. And pastor, they, they would say, means under shepherd. So it means that look, we not the shepherd, we, we, we under the shepherd. Mm -hmm. we, we, we helping him with his father. Y'all not my people, y'all God's people. Amen. So, so, Amen. So, so Jesus says that I'm the good shepherd. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He, he, he said that the, the hired man is not the shepherd. He does, he's not the owner of the sheep. He see when the wolf is coming, he flees. <laughs> he leaves. That ain't my sheep. <laughs> that ain't my flock. When hard times come, he gone. Mm -hmm. yes. But when you own the business, you see somebody <laughs> still in the <your> store. <laughs> It's a different than when you just work there. Oh, boy, when you work there, you're like, no, I might get some money registered too. <laughs> no. <laughs> so when he sees the wolf come and he flees, mm -hmm. the wolf snatches them and scatters the flock. He flees because he's just a higher hand. He doesn't care about the sheep. Mm -hmm. But I'm a good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know my father. I lay down my life for the sheep. Huh. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. 
I must bring them also. Amen. They will listen to my voice right. and they will become one flock with one shepherd. And for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it back. Amen. No one has taken anything from me. Wow. No one. But I lay it down on my own. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it back. This commandment I received from my Father. Amen. Jesus has the authority to bring you back. Yes. Nothing will snatch us from his hand. Amen. Amen. I want you to hold on in the fight. Yes. Trusting that the good shepherd is on your side. Yes. You are safe in his hand. Yes. Yes. He will protect you from the wolf from the bear and from the lion. Little one, little sheep. Here is the Lord. They come into his fold. I have given you what the Lord has 